Welcome back to video two of transfer pricing, looking at transfer pricing methods. So one of the reasons why I love ending the cost management course with a discussion on transfer pricing is really twofold. One is whenever you hear transfer pricing out and about in the real world, it typically, um, it has people cringe a little bit and they're like, ugh, uh, because transfer pricing, it's been my experience that people tend to think of it as tricky or difficult. And yes, it is nuanced and it is difficult and there's a lot of gray area. Uh, so I encourage you to embrace the gray area and understand the underlying principles because here's the second reason why I really like it. It's because we revisit things that you've already learned. And for most of you, you pretty much demonstrated that you've mastered it to this point. And what do I mean? Well, when looking at transfer pricing methods, there are really three main areas, and that is market-based transfer prices, cost-based transfer prices, and negotiated transfer prices. In Canada, the CRA has adopted the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development Hierarchy of Methods for Transfer Pricing. And that is how we link our following methods of transfer pricing from the most preferred to the least preferred. So market-based, cost-based, and negotiated transfers. Right now, before we delve into the nuances of each one of these, I want you to use your knowledge and put some intuition down, maybe pause the video and put down what do you think market-based transfer pricing could be? What about cost? Negotiated? Give it a think. And I guarantee you, your intuition will serve you a lot better than perhaps my video will. You have all the knowledge. You have done this course. The last little bit should really just give you confidence to ride it out till the end. Okay, market-based transfer prices. Market-based transfer prices are straightforward in theory. This is the transfer price used uh, as either the price that is retrieved from an active market of buyers and sellers, or set at the amount that the company sells the product for externally. In practice, it can be very easy to find a market basis for some products. For example, gold bullion, or difficult, in the case of specialized electrical components with only one real use. All right, so now let's take a look at cost-based transfer prices. Cost-based transfer prices are based on the production cost of the item or service in question. We pretty much spent the majority of a full course looking at uh, different types of costs and how to allocate them and how to chop them up and look at them in different um, aspects. And this one will be revisiting uh, lots of those um, items that we've already taken a peek at because the basis for a cost-based transfer pricing may be variable production cost. It might be variable and fixed production cost. It could be full product cost. It could also include a markup such as cost plus, which get uh, on top of the transfer price, which gives the selling division a return on investment. In practice, cost-based transfer prices require detailed knowledge of the cost being uh, of the cost of products being created, as we've seen all course. Lastly, negotiated transfer prices. These are the transfer prices that are reached by managers of each unit negotiating with one another. When an agreement is reached, a transfer price is set and agreed to for some period of time, whether that is a constant period of time or just based on a previously agreed formula. Negotiated transfer prices can be costly to determine since negotiation occupies management's time that could be spent on production or optimization. This also could place certain units at a disadvantage due to scale and an inability to sell the product externally, and this may be viewed as unfair. Okay, so I just wanna circle back to this first one. So typically, the floor is your cost-based, so you wouldn't transfer it from one unit to another below what it costs that, um, that unit to produce. The ceiling would be the market-based, you would never transfer it for more than they could uh, than the unit you're transferring to could purchase from an outside supplier. So negotiated tends to be between, uh, pardon me, is between the floor of the cost base and the ceiling of the market based. All right, let's tie this into the first video: transfer pricing and responsibility centers. The transfer price selected should consider a number of factors and be with 
in that floor to ceiling I just mentioned. The transfer price selected um, should look at the responsibility center. What's the company's overall goals and objectives? Are we able to, oh gosh, I hope so, um, track the company's costs? Are they well known and accurately tracked? Is there an available market reference to which the goods or services are readily available? Is there any regulatory, that is tax environment, that the company is in? Uh, and is there a perfectly competitive market to support this transaction? All right, time for a question. Canadian Oil Producers, Inc. is a company that produces and sells crude oil to a subsidiary that uses the oil to create plastic products such as kitchen containers. The oil produced is identical to oil produced by other producers, and the company sells some of its oil to external customers who further refine it into jet fuel. The type of transfer price that is most likely appropriate would be A, market-based, B, cost-based, C, negotiated, or D, reverse margin-based. What do you think? The correct answer is A, market-based. The product in question is a well-known commodity for which a price can easily be obtained through public exchanges. Further, the company is capable of selling the product to external customers. If a transfer price is set below market value, they will have an incentive not to produce any oil for the other operating divisions, but rather sell it all externally, which would overall hurt the company. All right, great work. One last video and I'll see you there.